Okay, let's look at an example of constructing a confidence interval for the difference in two proportions, and then we'll, we'll follow up on that idea a little bit. Okay, so here's our data. So we've got how many people approve of stem cell research early in the 2000s and then later in that decade. All right, so we've got 43% approving in 2002, 58% approving later. All right, sample, oh, also sample sizes of 1,500 each time, so very large sample sizes. We want a 95% confidence interval here to, to estimate our difference in proportions. So we can let 2009 be group 1, 2002 be group 2. It doesn't really matter as long as we stay consistent. I just point that out because there's, there's a lot going on in this formula. So I just like to kind of just plug into our formula here, symbols-wise, to keep everything straight. All right, so I'm going to have 09 coming first, then 02 next. Now, conditions-wise, I think our two sample sizes were both 1,500, so really big samples. We should be in good shape, meet our central limit. So let's plug in. There we go. Do the math, and we get an interval that looks something like this. So again, how do we interpret it? Well, just like most confidence intervals, it was 95% confidence interval. We're 95% confident the interval we created captures our parameter of interest. Our parameter of interest here is the... Uh, the true difference. All right, now something interesting to note here, let's follow up on this interpretation a little bit, because here we are looking for kind of a difference through time. So this gives us an opportunity to look into this. All right, from that interval we just created, we estimated that difference. Could we answer some further questions with that? All right, did, did their opinions change? And if they did change, which way did they appear to, to have changed? All right, so remember, this interval is what we calculated. And let's also remember that we were using the data from 09 minus the data from 02. This gave us a positive difference right, from about 12% to about 19%. Okay, so if we want to read into this confidence interval a little bit more, what this is telling us is we, we're we estimating that attitudes changed and actually anywhere from 11.5 to 18.5% of p more people actually do think that here it was stem cell research is, is okay to do. All right, so really, whenever we're interpreting an interval for differences, what we can do is we can look in that interval and see, does the interval include zero? If the interval includes zero, right, then zero is a plausible value for that difference. If it does not contain zero, and they're both positive, right, well, that means the one that came first is probably a little bit bigger. If it's negative, that means the one that came second is probably a little bit bigger. Okay, so that brings me to our larger point here about kind of the link between hypothesis tests and confidence intervals. There's lots of crossover there, at least between terminology and some of the mechanics, right? But we've tried to keep them pretty separate from now on because they are separate and they do answer different questions. But in the right context, a confidence interval like that can really help us answer some questions similar to a hypothesis test. All right, so let's, we'll keep this in general and then we'll kind of look at specific examples. So say we've just got a whatever arbitrary percentage confidence interval. 95 is common. Our critical value would be 1.96. And then, so say this was the interval that I calculated from 0.4 to 0.6. If I have a claimed value in mind and I now look and see is that claim value included in my interval? So say my claim value is 0.3, which actually is not in that interval. Imagine running a two-tailed hypothesis test with your alpha equal to one minus your confidence level. All right, remember a two-tailed hypothesis test in this case would look like this. All right, say P claim value 0.03, two-tailed, alpha would be 0.05, 
So I divide alpha by 2, look up my critical value. My critical value there would also be 1.96. And if we had the data, if we did the math, you'd find that we end up rejecting. Okay, so a, a, if I match up my alphas, if I match up my confidence level and significance level, building a confidence interval for a difference is, is exactly the same as running a two-tailed hypothesis test. Now, a one-tailed hypothesis test is more useful in a lot of cases, right? but maybe you're kind of noticing this, and I think this is an important point to follow up on here. Right? So a constructing a confidence interval is basically, and seeing does my claim value fall in that interval, is basically the same as running a two-tailed hypothesis test where alpha matches up with your confidence level. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you.